The ruling People's Action Party PAP has promised to engage more widely with Singaporeans, including through new channels, to foster two-way dialogue. Prime Minister Lawrence Wong said on June 8 that the PAP will create two new groups within the party to address cross-cutting issues of mental health and climate change. While he will personally do more in his public communications, the party will also step up its engagement efforts through its government parliamentary committees GPCs, party organs organised along ministry lines, he said at an event to cap a six-month exercise to refresh and strengthen the PAP. PAP MPs want to engage not just within the party but also with wider community groups and stakeholders, PM Wong told a 400-strong crowd of party activists and partners at the event at the Sands Expo and Convention Centre. This is so that the PAP can better represent Singaporeans' views and have more effective discussions and debates in Parliament, said PM Wong, who is also the party's Deputy Secretary-General. While the PAP has various groups such as its Women's Wing, Young PAP and PAP Seniors Group which actively engage their respective communities, PM Wong said the key challenges facing Singapore increasingly cut across traditional demographic lines. Thus, the party will set up a new mental health group to be led by Senior Minister of State for Communications and Information and Health General Putuchiri and a climate action group under Senior Minister of State for Manpower and Sustainability and the Environment Kopo Kun. This happened to be, amongst other things, two key national issues and also priorities for the PAP government, said PM Wong. As a party, we want to use these groups to better engage our activists and also all stakeholders. Be it healthcare professionals, environmental groups, community organisations or individuals. The Climate Action Group will integrate efforts under the PIPS Action for Green Towns initiative, which has been rolled out at all 15 PAP town councils, and take on board the Young PIPS 2020 position paper to advance the vision of Singapore as a green hub. The Mental Health Group, meanwhile, builds on a 2022 Mental Health Survey by the Young PAP which found a strong public call for increased mental health support. PM Wong urged people with views and ideas on these issues to join the two groups in their deliberations, so that the PAP government's policies and plans in these areas are better informed. Those who join need not be party activists, he stressed. You may be just a citizen with an interest in these issues, join the groups too. He said, We will engage you, involve you in our deliberations and discussions. The PAP said it will also pave the way for its GPCs to give greater voice to Singaporeans as their proxies in the House. GPCs are an existing setup within the PAP where certain MPs are assigned scopes carved out along broad ministry clusters, such as trade and industry, and national development. They were set up by the PAPE to scrutinise legislation and programmes of various ministries and to let its MPs give feedback to the government, said Leader of the House Indrani Roger during a parliamentary debate in March. Ministries do not have to brief GPCs, but can choose to do so when they want to seek the GPC's input, she added. PM Wong said, our MPs will step up their engagements through the GPC's, we want to engage not just our own activists, but also wider community groups and stakeholders. PM Wong said one area where the PAP gets a lot of feedback is the need to communicate better. As the party in government, some of its outreach is government communications, such as to explain public policies, he noted. But as a political party, we too need to have our own effective communication channels, we cannot just rely on the civil service or government to communicate policies. He said. The PAP will learn and improve on this aspect, he said, adding, I too will strive to do more and do it better. 
he said he will meet the media more regularly to address issues of the day and the thinking behind certain policies. And will continue to make use of various social media platforms to reach out to more Singaporeans. He also promised to conduct more visits on the ground to engage Singaporeans in person and garner their feedback. On meeting the media more regularly, PM Wong pointed out that during the COVID-19 pandemic, he met the press almost every other day. While remarking that he does not intend to do this since there is no crisis. He said, I think having some more regular sessions with the media through press conferences can be useful to explain our thinking and why we are implementing certain policies. At the party level, the PAP will do more through digital channels to amplify its outreach, on top of relying on more traditional modes such as market walkabouts, house visits and dialogues. He said, recognising that good communication is two-way, PM Wong said he wants to hear Singaporeans' views and suggestions, anything from policy suggestions to feedback on how the party can serve each neighbourhood better. Another of the party's priorities is to strengthen its networks and harness collective expertise for a better Singapore, said PM Wong. The PAP strives to be a national movement for Singapore and Singaporeans and not just a political party. He said. This means the party must keep its doors open to anyone prepared to make common cause, whether or not they are prepared to don party colours. Thus, while its activists are the backbone of the party. PM Wong said he wants to grow the existing friends of the PAP network. Gesturing to some in the audience on June 8, he said, you may not be prepared to wear white on white. And that's fine. But as long as you're prepared to make common cause with the party and work with us to build a better Singapore, we welcome you and we thank you for your support. These friends and partners could be corporate organisations, social service organisations or individuals, as long as they see their purpose as working with the PAP to build a better Singapore. He said. The exercise to refresh the PAP was announced by PM Wong at the party's awards and convention in November 2023. Led by Minister for National Development Desmond Lee, who is also the PEP's Assistant Secretary-General and other fourth-generation leaders. The exercise involved the participation of more than 2,300 party activists across its branches. Wrapping up his speech, PM Wong noted that 2024 is the PEP's 70th anniversary, and the party has continually updated how it does things over the years while keeping one thing constant. We are always a party that serves the people, that puts the interests of Singaporeans first, he said. We are also a party of action. It's not just about words, but deeds, and we are a party that will always strive to make life better for all Singaporeans.